Hear that? Hollow. It sounds hollow, but it's not hollow. And um, no, this is not a cookie or a thin mint. <laughs> it's a very big thin mint. <laughs> or I'm a very tiny guy. By the way, everybody, welcome back to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host. And by the way, to all of you who have joined me since my last episode, months and months and months ago, welcome for the first time to the Voodoo Garden. Yes, the Voodoo Garden is still alive and kicking, and I'm kicking off the autumn season last week by giving away some seeds, and also this week by showing you an update on what's been happening for the last, I don't know, three months. <laughs> it's been a while since I did an episode because it was just too hot to be in here. But anyway, for all of you who have joined up, I'll tell you what the Voodoo Garden is. My Practice 55712 channel is where I go outside, I grow things, I have uh, turkeys, I have a dog, I have goats, I have a menagerie of madness going on out there, and it's a really fun life. But when winter comes along, I can't be outside gardening because, you know, it's ice and snow. And unless you're growing popsicles, you're not going to get too awful much grown in Iowa in the wintertime. So I spend more of my time in the winter in the voodoo garden when it's cold outside, it's warm and cozy in here. It's like a tropical jungle. And it keeps me sane. It keeps me sane because anybody who's really into gardening, you know that when the winter comes and it's cold and you can't be outside in your garden, you go stir crazy and you don't know what to do. Well, I have a solution for that. Join me here in the Voodoo Garden. I will teach you how to grow things indoors in your house. And it's very, very simple. It's nothing complex because I'm not a complex kind of guy. I'm a very simple kind of guy. And this is very easy growing. I teach you tips, tricks, uh, ideas, common sense ways to grow things if from tomatoes to peppers to banana trees to very exotic, very strange, very bizarre things. And like, I, I like the slogan says at the, at the end of this video, all things are possible in the Voodoo Garden because you're only limited by your imagination. And that is literally it. So that is what the Voodoo Garden is. And um, speaking of imagination, <laughs> nice little segue, huh? Speaking of, uh, of imagination, you got to see this. Take a look at this. What do you think? Yeah, it's kind of ugly. You know what this is? Well, I will tell you what it is. This is sort of what this is. This is one of three blocks of coir. Coir is also known as cocoa peat. And you've heard me mention this a lot of times on this channel. I use it religiously in the Voodoo Garden because it's the most perfect uh, soil uh, ingredient that you can have when you're gardening inside. And uh, what it is, is coconuts on coconut trees. They shave off that outer hair and husk and stuff. They take it, they shred it up, and then they compress it. Well, first they wash it to get all the salt off of it. And then they dry it, then they sh uh, shred it up, then they compress it into these, and they use like, I think 20 tons of pressure. Yes, 20 tons of pressure, and they compress this stuff into these blocks. And this is a wafer. This is one of three blocks that came in this package. I like this. I won't mention the name because I'll probably get sued. But <laughs> it is a wonderful thing. This is 11 pounds of cocoa peat. And I got it for like $9. Yeah, $9 or, yeah, $9.99. So anyway, I got this. And you can just break off one of these, break off a piece, toss it in water, and it hydrates up into soil. This little amount here will more than fill this container. Yeah, it's really wonderful stuff. I mix it with worm castings and vermiculite, and I make my own soil. I don't use potting mix because potting mix usually carries fungus gnats. And fungus gnats, those of you who know me, those of you that have been here for a while, you know that. They are my nemesis. I cannot stand fungus gnats because they will decimate your indoor garden. So anyway, uh, I use this to make my own soil. Well, this summer while I was outside, I had an epiphany. Yes, I did. I had an epiphany. <laughs> and it didn't hurt at all. No, I, I thought, you know what? What I'm doing is I'm buying this coir, I'm buying worm castings, and buying vermiculite, and I'm mixing them all together to make my soil. Well, uh, there really isn't a lot of, there is literally almost no nutrition in that soil. So I use organic fertilizer in my water, and I use it every time I water my plants. That's why they're so beautiful. <laughs> and uh, they are beautiful, I must say. They are definitely beautiful, they're very healthy, and they're growing naturally in here. Well, well, as natural as you can indoors. Well, what I thought was, you know, I make compost outside and I make a lot of it because, you know, I have, you know, 5,000 chickens and, and, and goats and, and turkeys and everything else going on out there. What if I were to be able to bring that compost inside and use it inside? That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? 
Well, there is a downside to that. If you bring compost in from outside, compost outside has all of these little bugs and nasties in it that are harmless outside because there's a balance going on in nature. For every bad guy, there's a good guy out there. And so if you have fungus gnats out there, you got itty bitty microbes and, and you have uh, little things in the soil that are called mites. And you also have little spiders that are gonna eat them. Well, indoors, we don't have that. And there's also other things that are in compost that you don't wanna bring inside because inside is more of a sterile environment. So if you bring that inside, you're gonna have a really whacked out balance and you could lose a lot of your plants. And since I have so many plants here that I've invested so much time in, I don't wanna lose them. So I don't take the chance of bringing compost in. Well, you can bring compost in if you sterilize it. And sterilizing it can take one of many different steps. Usually it's to heat it up, to kill anything that's in the compost. So that's what I did. I took some really rich compost and I heated it up. I took it in a slow cooker and I cooked it and the slow cooker cracked in half and I had poop. Well, it's, it, it was anaerobic compost, so it smelled like poop. I had liquid poop going all over my electric burner outside and I thought, ah, crap, really? So I got another uh, pot, an, a cast iron uh, Dutch oven and I cooked it over the, uh, over the electric plate and I heated it up and cooked it for hours. Then I brought it inside and I let it set in a container and I waited to see if any little baddies were gonna hatch you know, from eggs and stuff like that. No, nothing happened. So I managed to figure out how to bring compost in safely. Then what I did was I put it in a container and I added water and I mixed it with this. And then I took it all, mixed it all up and so I had this really rich soil. I thought, well, how can I preserve this? You know, because if you leave it moist, mold may grow on it and stuff. So I dried it out in my basement and then I used a press, a hydraulic press. And I made these, I made my own quar fertilizer compost discs. Yes. <laughs> so this is actually a compost enriched version of this. Yeah, I'm quite the mad scientist I am. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm not doing this uh, for uh, like a series of videos, but this is just my own little personal project. I'm going to rehydrate this in water and I'm going to grow stuff in it and see how it works. And if it works, I thought, wow, I could have myself a little cottage industry, couldn't I? I can make my own compost that's grown out here naturally and stuff. I can make my own compost, mix it with coir, dry it up, make these little discs, and uh, I could have a little product to offer the world. That would be kind of cool. But anyway, that was my little project. I thought it was kind of fun and I thought I'd bring it to your attention because it really excited me. I know it's just soil, but that gets me excited. Soil is my life. I love soil. Anyway, I got these. Yep. Uh, we're going to have some tough love going on here in the Voodoo Garden today. I'm not going to demonstrate it because you know what's really weird? Every time I kill a plant, uh, 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 people, they get mad at me because, you know, they say, you should do this with it, you should do that with it. I'm like, it's a plant, you know, I eat salad. You know, are you going to gripe if I eat a salad? Well, certain plants I grow for a while and then they either one, don't do well or don't do as well as I wanted or I've grown them to the, basically the extent of their life and this is a very small room and I can't grow the same thing day after day. You would not tune in. You wouldn't. You would not tune in if it was the same exact plants every single episode for years and years. You'd be like, why bother? I've already seen the same plants. So that's what I do. I grow plants. I demonstrate them. I uh, uh, give you the benefit of my experience messing up and having successes with them. And then you go on to grow something if you think that it's a, a good plant for your fit. And uh, other plants, I decide, you know what? I don't want to keep them. So I get rid of them. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. I need to make room because now that it's winter, I want to bring it. I want to start new plants. I want to start some peppers, tomatoes, other kinds of funky seeds that I got. So there are certain things that you won't be seeing in the Voodoo Garden anymore. And I want to let you guys know this ugly looking thing is what's left of my tobacco plant. Remember I had uh, those of you who, who were tuned in before I went on vacation here. Remember that huge tobacco plant that was growing in here and I got seeds from it and I got flowers and it was beautiful. This is called Shirazi tobacco. It was a big, tall, beautiful plant. And uh, I, uh, tell people you can grow these in your garden and it'll help take care of like little aphids and stuff like that because they're very sticky leaves and a lot of insects will stick to these especially fungus nets I found out and uh, quite by accident and uh, white flies as well yep white flies stuck to this thing it was really kind of gross it's like the living fly paper it was really gross anyway I need this pot because I'm going to be growing peppers in here during the winter and I want to get them huge before I take them out next year I figured why plant seeds 
right before I plant them outside and take this little tiny pepper plant and then plant it in the spring. That's kind of ridiculous for me, for my use. What I want to do is I want to start them now. Yeah, I know, everybody's thinking about uh, stopping their garden for the year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start next year's garden right now. So I'm going to start my tomatoes. I got some tomato seeds in. Uh, I got uh, some peppers from uh, uh, a friend. He sent me all different kinds of peppers, things I never even knew existed. Strange, bizarre things, and I'll show them to you Tune in throughout the winter, you're going to see some peppers that I've never grown before, and some that you probably haven't either. They are bizarre, they're beautiful, and I think you're going to enjoy them. I'm going to start them out from seed now. I'm going to grow them, show you how I prune them, and uh, transplant them, and grow them throughout the winter. And that way, next spring, I'm going to take uh, uh, some of these plants, like in this size pot, a pepper plant, and grow it in a pot because I have raised beds, and I have limited space out there, and I don't want to dig up a new garden. So I thought, you know what? Some people don't have the benefit of having raised beds. Some people don't have the benefit of having a yard that they can turn into a garden. They are limited in what they can do. So you know what? Next year I'm going to be doing my raised beds and I'm also going to be doing container gardening. And I think that's going to be a benefit to some folks out there because I want to help as many people as I possibly can. I thought, you know what? Why not container gardening? You can grow a tomato to full size and get huge productions. You can grow peppers to full size get huge productions. I've grown a pepper plant in a pot this size up to seven feet tall. I've grown a pepper plant here five feet across and five feet tall. Yeah, I have the videos to show it. And so I've been able to do that and I want to show you how to do that. And that way, maybe during the summer, I mean, maybe you can start your plants now and then in the summer, take them outside and you have this big, beautiful plant, get the benefit of a good harvest without having to go to the expense and trouble and time of getting a full scale garden. Some of us don't want a full garden. Some of us just want a few peppers or a few tomatoes. And this is going to cater to those type of people. Oh, and that's heavy. So anyway, that guy's got to go. This thing back here, oh, by the way, I'm going to show you a couple of these plants. This one right here, you can see it on the, on the left side of your screen. This is called a blood banana or zebrina banana. Yeah, I grew this from a little itty bitty tiny dot of a plant. And uh, I grew it up and it grew really huge at my former home. And then uh, I, w I uh, cut it back uh, all the way to the soil, all right? And it started growing, and it wasn't doing so well, you know? It w I had that problem with my soil, and then it started dying, but a little pup came out of the bottom. Yeah, and so that pup started growing, and that's what this is. Yeah, this is not that plant that I've had for years. This thing is growing to the ceiling, and I don't know what to do with it. I wish it would put out a freaking banana, but no, I'm getting big beautiful leaves that are like three feet across it's an incredibly beautiful plant take a look at this this is what a blood banana looks like just green leaves with a really beautiful random pattern of dark and the center leaves that come out look at the color on that it's the most striking beautiful green i get about maybe a leaf every couple weeks or so yeah and here is my height. So I'm five foot six, I think, maybe on a good day. Yeah, and this thing goes way up to the ceiling. Yeah, it's all over the place. I have leaves going everywhere. And you know what I recommend is that when you're growing these things, you're going to have all kinds of leaves on them. And what you're going to want to do is the lower leaves, they tend to get shaded, of course, naturally, by the upper leaves. And see how these are kind of folding down? Yeah, that's because they're not getting as much light as the, the upper leaves do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just snip these lower leaves off and I snip them all the way right to the plant and it doesn't hurt it at all. What it'll do is it'll take the load off of down here and it'll help it get stronger towards the top. And then you get a nice looking trunk as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing to this banana tree. But holy cow, it really does take up a lot of real estate in this room, doesn't it? <sighs> that's why I got to limit myself. I can't grow everything. Where would I put it? This is another issue that I'm having. This is called a castor bean plant. You see these usually growing outside. People will grow these and um, they're just a, an ornamental plant and uh, they do produce seeds and they're called castor beans. And the plant I think is poisonous, the seeds are poisonous, but I grow it just for looks. And uh, I don't have any kids or animals that are gonna chew on this thing. So I've been growing this inside and I grew it from a seed. And the same thing with the banana tree uh, that I recommend doing, uh, I'm doing with this. And so I've been removing the leaves. Let's go right down here. See? I've removed the leaves as it grows. And you can get this really beautiful maroon stem. The color on this is really something to see. It's got a beautiful stem. And the leaves are graceful. The stems are graceful. 
it's a really fun plant to grow and it's very simple very simple to grow as long as you don't have your kids gnawing on the darn thing is the this is the backdrop of the voodoo garden this is a passion fruit yes it's a passiflora something i have no idea <laughs> I can't pronounce it, but uh, it's it's called the passion fruit. It's a tropical vine, and uh, it's one plant. Yeah, it started out as one plant, and I pinched it off, and it uh, uh, sent out new shoots, and I pinched those off. So now what I have is this plant that took over everything. It went all the way to the roof, and now it has no idea where it wants to go. Yeah, it's going all over the place, but it's really a beautiful backdrop for the rest of the voodoo garden, isn't it? Yep, and you can you can tell it's hard to get back here because look my calendar says June yes I haven't flipped that calendar since June because it's grabbing onto the calendar and I don't want to damage anything so sometimes you just gotta back up and let the plant do what it wants to do and I have no idea what this plant wants to do but apparently it wants to be left alone so that's what I'm gonna do with it sometimes you just gotta back up and say okay you know what goes good with dark green purple yep this is a uh, Persian shield. Yeah, I got this as a little plant. Those of you who tuned in a long time ago, you saw this little itty bitty plant, right? Well, this little itty bitty plant is no longer itty bitty. It's starting to fade at the bottom. It does this. It's been going through cycles. It grows really good, and then the leaves start dying off. Then it grows really good, the leaves die off. I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, apparently the plant does. And it was just one plant growing up, and I pinched it off. I do a lot of that, by the way. I do pinch the plants because I like bushy plants. I don't like straggly plants. And right down here, let's get right down here, see? Yep. It's like a little menorah, isn't it? Yep. I, I let the side stem grow on it and the middle stem. So this is just one plant. But the color is absolutely beautiful. I love the color on this thing. And I hope it survives, but it's called a Persian Shield. If you ever have a chance to grow one of these, I guarantee you it's going to be a showstopper and it's definitely going to get some conversation going on in your home. I know you're going to hate me. I just know it, but I got to say it. Say goodbye to the pineapple plant. I've been growing a pineapple in here for so many years and it is a beautiful plant. It's graceful, it's beautiful, and they grow so well and you get fruit from it. Uh, there are so many people out in the world that are now growing pineapple plants because I did an episode on how to grow pineapple from a top that you get off of a pineapple. And uh, a lot of people grew that and they love it. It's a fun project for kids, adults, everybody. And people are growing pineapples all over the world. And you know what? This plant has done its job. It's educated people about, you know, stepping outside that box and trying something a little bit different. It's a beautiful plant, but it does take up a lot of real estate. Each one of these leaves can get up to six feet long. Look at this leaf. Is that incredible or what? Yes, so they do take up a lot of real estate in your house. And uh, this room is not that big. And those leaves are razor sharp. They're jagged and they poke you. And you know, I need the room. I need the room and I've grown this for so long. It's really done its job. And I, I am very appreciative of that. But it's time to start something else and move on a new path. So I'm gonna say goodbye to the pineapple plant, but I have a relative of it. I think it's a relative. And so it's not really bye-bye. It's a matter of changing gears. Take a look at the relative. This, I believe, is related to the pineapple plant. This, uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, this is called agave. Agave is a plant. It's a succulent, I believe. And it grows in the deserts. And uh, it looks a lot like a yucca. But this is a plant uh, that I think the base gets big and round and uh, uh, they harvest these, they take off the leaves and stuff and they harvest the bulb and they make uh, some kind of booze out of it. I don't know if it's tequila or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, th uh, this is grown for that. Somebody sent me these itty bitty uh, agave seedling things and uh, in an envelope and I tossed them in here and they grew. I have two of them. I have one here and one, I'm trying to pan, as smoothly as I can way over in the corner yeah there's a second one there and I got a feeling one of these days they're either gonna flower or they're gonna produce a bulb I don't know which but these are gonna take the place of the pineapple they, they look pretty and they don't take up quite as much room <laughs> speaking of plants that take up a lot of room this is called a, a dragon fruit not a dragon tree this is a dragon fruit 
And all a dragon fruit is, is a cactus that just kind of vines all over the place. I, I grew one from a little tiny itty bitty start, you know, just very little. And there's my fingers, where am I? I, I do, I grew a little tiny one. And then it, I took a cutting off of that and I just laid it in here. And it, it grows like crazy. Once these things get going, you can't stop them. They're always putting out new ones. And look at this one. It grew up the side of the wall. It puts out these aerial roots and it grabs onto things. Yeah, it's a, it's a cactus with aerial roots. Is that bizarre? Look at that. And it was growing across the roof and it almost fell. So I had to put up a little hook up there to hold it. And it's just going nuts. And there's another one that's taking over uh, right on the side. Yeah, one of these days, this is going to flower and fruit. And I'm going to be so proud to show it off. So this one's st sticking around. As much as I dislike growing cactuses, I love this plant. I really do. I am enjoying the heck out of it. Okay, okay, we can all laugh now. <laughs> this is the spider plant. It was just three little tiny babies that somebody sent me. They said, Ray, you need a spider plant in your, in your grow room. And I would mentioned that maybe I'll go get me a spider plant. Well, every time I open my mouth, somebody sends me something. So I learned to keep my mouth shut. But I, I appreciate this so much. And I don't remember who sends me things, but I always am appreciative of this. So you, you know who you are. Whoever sent me this, <laughs> this thing, look at what happens. This is what happens when you get a spider plant. And this is the miracle of organic growing. There are no chemicals in this. No, 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 no. This is organic fertilizer. It's the Quar based potting soil that I use. And you just can't stop it. It's just underneath the light bulb. They don't require any special care. And even if they get root bound, so what? They love being root bound. Look at the babies. Yeah, it just goes on and all the way around. This is evenly spaced all the way around. This thing went nuts. It's flowering, it's putting out seed pods, it's putting out babies all at the same time. And that's one of the nice things about spider plants. Uh, you can grow them, give them away, enjoy them. Everybody that you know can enjoy them. They're kind of like strawberries the way that they grow. You know, they grow a big, beautiful plant, but then they put out these little starters, and this one's even rooting onto another one. Wow, they just don't stop themselves. And all you got to do is put it into soil clip off the stem and you got a whole new plant. And that's what I'm doing. I started out with three little plants in here and I took the biggest of the babies and I shoved them in there. So now I got six of them in there. Yeah, that's a beauty and it's just loving the Voodoo Garden. It really is. This little unremarkable thing I think is going to get remarkable really, really fast. This is a dwarf papaya. Yep, somebody sent me dwarf papaya seeds and said, Ray, try it. And you know, I've been trying to germinate papaya in the voodoo garden for many, many years because they're beautiful plants, but I can only try a dwarf papaya because, you know, papaya plants are huge. They're bigger than that banana tree. So I wanted to make sure it was small. Somebody gave me some dwarf papaya seeds. And look, yeah, it's a new addition here. You notice all these gnats? Yeah, you see gnats every now and then? Yeah, those aren't fungus gnats, by the way. No, nope, those little things aren't fungus gnats at all. I thought they were at first. I thought, oh no, here we go again, fungus gnats. But I caught a few of them in flypaper and I looked at them really close. They're common gnats. I thought I had fungus gnats again. I thought, how can I have fungus gnats? I have predatory mites in my soil. I shouldn't be having fungus gnats. And I looked at them, they're re regular gnats. In the autumn, and they're all over the place too. The, the way that you can tell if you have fungus gnats is they'll be hovering above the soil and running along the soil. That's a fungus gnat. Regular gnats, they fly all over the place and they don't land very often. And these things are just a pain in the butt because it's autumn. And so what's happening is all these weird Chinese beetles, Asian beetles are coming inside. Millipedes are coming inside. Everything's coming inside trying to find a place to hibernate. And same thing with the gnats. I open up my window to get some fresh air and these gnats are so tiny, they fly in through the screen. So I can't stop them. And uh, they really are harmless, but boy, they're just a pain because they get between my glasses and my eyeball and they just do, <laughs> they do this little ricochet thing. They go, da, 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 and I'm trying to do things and live my life and I have to take off my glasses, swipe my face, and I've hit my nose more than a few times. But yeah, they are a pain in the butt. Anyway, folks, that's just a few of the things that are going on here in the Voodoo Garden. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'm going to wrap this up because I don't want this episode to go on for hours and hours and hours. I just wanted it to be a really quick update. I'm going to have lots more updates. So I'll be showing you things that I'm starting, seeds that are germinating, plants that are growing in here, and the way that I prune and care for all of this stuff. If you have any questions regarding indoor gardening, post it in the comment section below. I guarantee you I will answer your question if you have one. Thank you everybody for joining me in the Voodoo Garden for this kickoff of the autumn season. This is Ray. I'm out of here. Okay everybody, back to your places.